so let's start with today's class can you guys see the screen Okay, now can you guys see it? Yeah. There's some background noise. Okay, so we are starting with our 12th class. And uh, in this class, uh, let's see what we have to do. The important thing is that uh, you should, since the pace of the classes uh, has been slow because we only we have only one class in a week uh, if we were having classes on daily basis then we would have uh, one we would have covered this much work in you know three or four weeks and uh, I uh, already told you guys and I expect from you guys that you should spend a little bit of more time with Python then you will develop the skill of uh, programming, writing programs, developing programs in Python. That needs time from your side uh, as well. N uh, just relying on this lecture of uh, this class of one hour on weekly basis is not going to be sufficient. You need to spend a little bit of more time during the week. And therefore, I'm giving you the project. So please take some time, spend some time on it and properly do it and submit it to me uh, as soon as possible. So uh, we've been um, we've been discussing the uh, um, f open we have open function and close function opening files reading them and etc. So we will uh, continue with that at the moment and then we will uh, I will discuss the project as well. So as you can see, we can open a file to read it. First we create an object by using the open function and then we specify the name of the file and the intention with for which we are uh, we want to open it and in this case you can see R over here so we want we are opening it to read it and then the next function the method you can see we are using the read method F is the object that we have created and dot read is the method we use to read the file and then that is printed by the print function on the screen so this is the basic uh, thing that we do now there are a number of different methods available to us which can do a lot of different functions for example read line and we specify the size of the file uh, the uh, size of the portion of the file that we want to read so it reads one line of the file at a time the number of bytes to be read can be limited by specifying the size so size basically is a number that represents the number of byte so in a line if we want to read a certain number of bytes we specify those number of bytes and then those are read the other things are not read and not printed and not displayed then there is another function read lines in this again we specify the size of the mm, file portion of the file that we want to read and this it's, it's just a hint uh, it's not the exact value the uh, approximate value uh, or read all the lines read lines reads the lines and then returns them as a list of strings uh, you uh, you must have uh, if you recall we have discussed what is a list list is you know it's a type of uh, collection of different objects and in this case those objects are the strings so if size hint is spe specified then the read process runs until approximately the size hint bytes have been read so it reads a certain number of bytes from the file after that we have the seek you have to uh, basically remember these uh, functions and uh, with the with uh, with practice you will be able to st uh, uh, you will start using those functions when you make but if you have those if you have these functions in your mind that these functions exist and this is their function then it will be easier for you to select them when you're writing a program when you're making code so seek function offset and whence it if we don't specify the whence uh, it simply gives us the, the uh, uh, we, mm, basically uh, what it does is sets the current read write position in the file to the offset we specify an offset like for example it's a number uh, say for example 5 6 or 10 so it goes to that position uh, basically when we are reading from a file or writing to a file the you can think of it as uh, we have a cursor sort of cursor 
like we have cursor on the screen so if you want to read us if you want to go to a specific uh, portion within the file within the within a text file then you just have to simply move the cursor over there and in order to do that we use this seek function using the seek function we go to the uh, whatever position that we want within the file and tell is the opposite of seek function it gives us the information about where the current position is where you are reading or writing the file so returns the current read write position in the file so now Haitham you tell me what does seek do and what is the purpose of tell function Haitham are you there Are you guys, are you guys listening to me? Sorry, I'm not Okay. I'm not tell me what is the purpose of seek function and tell function? Uh, seek is the... Sorry. The seek and the everything? Uh, have you read, have you, uh, did you, uh, were, were you concentrating when I was on read line? What is the purpose of read line? Why do we do use uh, read line? Yeah. See, wait, you're saying seek or read? No, I'm uh, now I'm asking about read line. Oh, uh, it's to find a certain amount of bytes inside. Sorry, something about read a certain amount of bytes in. Yes. File. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's okay. Now, uh, what about the seek function? What's the purpose of seek function? <laughs> I didn't quite understand C. Okay, what's the purpose of tell? Uh, 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 Emma, can you explain me what is the purpose of seek and what is the purpose of tell function? What are they doing? What are they supposed to do? Uh, uh, seek files uh, within the file. Okay. And uh, I will tell us the. Uh, Tell you where the read write position is in the file. Okay, and what what's the purpose of the tell function? That's what it tells you where the current read write position is. Yes, that's good. So uh, now let's see uh, a bit of code of these you uh, you guys have to open up your uh, start running your spider uh, ide and try these uh, try uh, these uh, uh, code fragments for this you need to have the file with this name them if you are using the same name you need to have a file with this demo file dot txt file in the same folder where you are keeping your python code so make a text file first there and then try this F open and this these functions. Write something in the demo file and then use this read lines. Okay, uh, my screen was now. Can you guys see the screen? Now, okay. Now, uh, can you guys see the screen now? Yes. Okay. Now open up your spider IDE and try out this uh, code fragment. And uh, don't forget to close the file as well. And uh, first, before writing this program, make a small uh, text file with the name, for example, demo file dot text, and write something in it and then mm, uh, show me your screen as well I am sending the file I am sending the uh, I am sending the screenshot through whatsapp or you can take the screenshot you can take the screenshot and save it f uh, with you and then use it to uh, write your code uh, in your file in your demo file what you can do is write two lines of text in the first line write hello welcome to demo file.txt 
and in the next line type this file is for testing purpose full stop so yeah, uh, uh, you have to, uh, you have to write hello exclamation mark welcome to demo file dot text enter and in the next line this file is for testing purpose only and then enter and then save it and share your screen so that I can see what you guys are up to first item you show me your share your screen have you guys taken the screenshot of this uh, uh, file that I want you Yeah, my screenshot function takes like a little bit of time. You okay, have to keep I'm, the I'm presenting. I'm I'm presenting again, and uh, I'm presenting <coughs> again. No, no, no. Can you see the uh, this uh, slide? Open demo file or text for read purpose and read yeah. lines thirty three. Now take okay, a screenshot. Take a screenshot and send it on WhatsApp. Keep it with you. Send it on WhatsApp, and then after that, I will stop sharing. And I, them you will be sharing your screen and write this code. Okay. Are you? Have you taken the screenshot? Yes. Okay. Now have them present your, share your screen, and show us what you are up doing. Okay, I can see your screen now. So you are creating the file object using the open function. Uh, okay, you are in the file. Oh, you are in the text file. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, did you enter two lines, two different sentences in it? You don't have to write in quotes. Just. Uh, write simple plain English without any quotes or anything any square brackets or anything else just it's simple text file hello and whatever you want to say you can write it there and you can write in several lines as well now wait, uh, wait a second what have you written in your uh, text file? Can you show your text file? Uh, okay. Uh, write a complete sentence there. <sighs> what have you written? I can't read it. Hello, my name is Haitam. Okay, goodbye. Okay, that's okay. Save it. And now write your, make your code. Can you zoom it a bit? Okay, now it's visible. So you're using read lines, and in the argument of read lines, write. Uh, uh, you don't need to write 33. We don't have 33 bytes there. You can write, for example, say, let's try it from 10. So zoom it a bit. What it has this what what does it say? Hello, my name is Haitam. And after that there is no next line. 
Can you zoom? zoom no. A bit? I I don't know how you zoom this side. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, instead of ten, uh, write, for example, write twenty, and then see what happens. This is size hint. Now write uh, forty. So we have the good boy now. So we get the hint of the size, and it when that hint, uh, when uh, when the next line comes within that specific range, approximately it uh, reads it and makes it the second uh, entry of the list. Uh, what it has displayed is known as list. The list is displayed in square brackets, and since it contains strings, therefore the strings within the single quote are displayed there. So good, that's good. Now you can stop sharing. We can go back to the lecture. Okay. The the hint parameter is optional. If you don't write it, then the uh, if the number of bytes uh, if the number of bytes returned exceed the hint number, no more lines will be returned. Default value is minus one means that all the lines will be returned. If you don't give the hint uh, number that is in the uh, in the argument of read lines, this 33 which you can see here, if we don't specify this number, then in that case it reads the complete file. It displays the all the lines of the file. Now we have the seek method. The, the function uh, function and method. The, what's the difference between function and method? Can any any one of you tell me? What you can see over here, uh, what what you can see over here, f uh, the object file object, and then there's a dot in between it, and then we have seek. So this we call this method. We are using a seek method over here. Method methods are used in this way. Functions are not used in this way. We give arguments into the functions, and they they are not connected with any uh, variable with the dot operator. When we connect, uh, functions are methods are very similar, but when we connect. When we have a method, we connect it with the variable using this dot operator. So seek is a method. It is uh, placed uh, after the variable, uh, variable's name, where with a dot in between it. So, so what's happening here is that seek method, seek uh, in Python seek function, uh, we uh, they are calling it function. Uh, function their functions and methods are very similar to each other. Functions are written independently like this. They may be maximum at best be given an argument, but when we are using as them as method, then they are connected. Uh, they are printed like this: f dot seek. Then they are called the method. So f seek method is used to change the position of the file handle to a given specific position. File handle is like a cursor, which defines from where the data has to be read or written to in the file. So uh, in Uh, from what uh, is the the input from what is uh, we will talk about it later, but offset is what we must first understand what is meant by offset. Offset is the number of position to move forward. From what it defines the point of reference. If you don't specify the point of reference, it by default assumes the starting position, the start of the file. So from this uh, and which is pretty much logical. If you have if you uh, if your reference position is start of the file and you say ten. Then this means that you will go to the tenth position from the start of the file, and uh, then you will be reading the file from there or writing to the file from there. So uh, then we have uh, two, three different options for um, from what we will uh, see that later on. First, we understand offset. Now let's look at this file. I shared this file uh, about two weeks ago, and let me see if I have that with me. Right now, you can. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay. I have this GFG text with me, and uh, yeah. what's the, what's the name of the what's the name of this file? Seek. 
fseek it's using seek function i don't remember what was the name of the file back there uh, let me check simple fix yas files yas files for yas seek this must be the file yas seek Okay, this is our seek. It's using the seek. It opens the file for reading purpose. Then uh, we are using this f read lines two, and we have given the hint of two bytes to it, and it reads the file of two bytes. Then after that, we go to the 65th position, 65th position number 65, f dot seek 65, and then from there, and then uh, we will see that uh, what's the value of uh, the cursor where what's the position of the cursor by using this tell function and then after that we are using the read line to read the line after that so uh, let's first look at what's inside this gf file oh coding is fun now let me write something else coding is fun python is cool it's saturday morning over there we are what should i write let's go to the next line it's saturday morning and uh, it's nine o'clock here so now what happens let's see when we run this file Coding is fun, Python is cool, it's Saturday morning. Now, uh, this is what we have uh, displayed over uh, from in line number 14. Coding is fun, Python is cool, it's Saturday morning. And then there's a next line. It has, uh, it has displayed the complete line. It hasn't gone to the next line because the size we specified was only two after that we i have uh, used the seek function line 18 and 65 we are going we have moved to the 65th position now where is the 65th position uh, this is if we count it one two three four five six seven eight let's uh, make it a bit reasonable a okay, one two three four five six seven let's let me make it seven so that we can see that again because seven is over here before is so when we write f seek seven it go uh, the cursor uh, uh, of reading the file and writing the file that moves to this a uh, position this is the seventh position c is one o is two and so on one two three four five six seven so it and after that you can see the seven printed here it, this is because of this tell function which you can see in line 21 print f dot tell tell tells us the position of the cursor where from where we are reading the file or where we are writing to the file and after that in line number 23 you can see read line so the line is read after this uh, cursor's position that is it reads the complete line from this position where the cursor is that is from here is fun and goes to the end of the file end of the line and then we have the next line so it will not uh, read that line and if we write the read lines then it should read the next line as well and you can see that it has read the next line and made a second entry of the list it is nine o'clock when we when we read line it reads just one line before the enter and when we uh, type lines then it types the uh, reads the next line as well 
So what you guys have understood from this, uh, uh, Ahmed, can you please tell me what's happening here in this program? Ahmed, are you there? Uh, you open the text, uh, GFG, and you read it. Yes. Then you print, uh, learn to... What does it mean? Uh, learn to... Uh, read lines means that you are reading the lines. You are reading not just you one line, line then you more lines, it. but uh, how many lines? That lines that are close two. to two. In this case, two means that only two bytes. Uh, so two bytes are just at the start of the first line. So it will only read read one line, and it will not go to the next line. On the other hand, if we write a big number that is more than say, for example, if we have how many bytes in within a line? One, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 and you can double that uh, 50 if you go write 55 or say for example if you write uh, 60 then it should read the next line as well I guess yes it's reading the next line yeah it's reading the next line here in the first print statement okay that's fine now uh, tell me about this line number 18 what's happening in line number 18 and then 21 uh, what's happening in line number 18 and 21 uh, sorry as muted uh, You guys please take a screenshot of this and uh, WhatsApp it or save it with you. WhatsApp it also as well and then try this out. Uh, make a text file, whatever name you want to have you, you, you can have and then you have to enter that name in the line number 13. And uh, Ahmed, what's happening in line number 18? Tell me please. Uh, it sets the read write position to uh, seven. Yes, seven. What is seven? What is what? What does it? Seven this seven bytes. means? Yes, seven bytes from where? The file. From the start of the file. Uh, if you start start counting, if you start counting from here, within our text file. Uh, let's move move to our text file. This is our text file this position from here we start counting uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 this is the seventh position and then after that is the eighth position whenever when we uh, read lines or uh, do anything then that thing starts for after this seven that is from i i is the eighth position everything else ap starts happening from this eighth position so this is what we have done and then we say f seek our file our cursor moves to this seventh position and then in the next line that is 21 we are using f dot tell now what does this mean Ahmed Ahmed what does uh, yes okay it, it returns the uh, current read write position in the file yes and that's seven because we set it to seven by using seek function that's good and then tell me what's happening after that uh it reads one last time then it closes the file okay that's good so it re reads all the lines after the seventh position till the end of the file and that is displayed as a list list of strings so you can see one line is from is fun goes uh, uh, down to morning that's j one line and after that the next line is displayed as this string it's nine o'clock here so this is what's happening here in this code now please uh, both of you please uh, run this program and uh, share the screenshot on whatsapp what you guys have done okay then we will move forward have you guys uh, entered this code in your uh, python id spider id uh, have you guys taken the 
screenshot of screenshot or not take a screenshot yes okay take a screenshot and uh, what send it through whatsapp and uh, try this code out and then when you guys are done after that we will move forward okay we have the same we have the same program here uh, on this slide again you can copy from here as well try this out get the results correct and then after that we will move forward Okay, are you guys done or still doing? Doing. Okay. Can any one of you share his screen? I'm st uh, I've stopped presenting. Ahmed, you please share your screen. Ahmed, can you please share your screen so that we can see what you are doing? Uh, can you please zoom a little bit? Okay, that's fine. I think you must write the brackets after close. So are the results okay? Are the results correct? Your yeah. your position is five and it's displayed the same position five. That's okay. That's good. So okay, that's good. So you can stop sharing and then we can move to the other parts of the lecture. Okay, that was about seek and tell. Now this is uh, from what argument? If we set it zero, this was the second argument of seek function we have used only one argument in the seek function the number that you wrote just uh, that is five and then after if we can put a comma within the brackets and then we can put zero as well the second argument if we set it to zero this which is the default value then that the reference position is from the beginning of the file if we set it to one then that is the uh, at the current file position sets the reference point at the current file position so if you are already at the start it will remain the starting position and if you set it to 2 then that sets the uh, at the end of the file but I tried out these and they were not working with our uh, python spider IDE therefore I will suggest that you have to be careful when you are using the other two arguments and it's a good idea if you keep it simple and that is uh, don't enter the 
second argument just put the one argument that is the offset from the starting position the way you have just done that's a bet that's a fine way so you can if you want to see what happens from where with the from what argument you can try this out later on after the class now there are other uh, functions and methods truncate uh, this truncate deletes all the data in the file after the current read write position or if specified and remember that if you use truncate mm, uh, function if you use this truncate function then it will delete the file it will save the file it, it will delete the data which is in the saved file so we have to be careful about it uh, you will not get the second chance and the data in the uh, file will be deleted if you use the truncate size truncate function and size specifies uh, if the if specified everything except the first size bytes this uh, truncate deletes all the data in the file after the current read write position or if specified everything except the first size bytes so if you use the truncate function and you are at any position within the file normally we are at the start of the file so the whole file will be deleted or the file that portion of the file that is after the cursor position that will be deleted and if you specify the size of the bytes say for example you specify 10 the starting 10 bytes will be left and other everything will be deleted and then we have a uh, write str write str strings the uh, writes the string to the file and we have already used this we, we we have used this write method earlier as well we just initialize a string and then we pass it as argument to this write method and then it it's written and saved in the file now if i s if i s, uh, use this truncate now let's use that truncate in our file uh, we are at the seventh position let's move to say for example uh, some last uh, some lit position like uh, for example 40 and see where we are in the file uh, okay you guys can share see my screen so we so the current position is 40 40th position and 40th position is uh, over here day Saturday Saturday it's here at R of the Saturday now if I use the truncate function it will delete it is supposed to delete the f dot truncate method like this it will delete everything that is after this uh, set, uh, set this R of the Saturday now if let me add three with it so that we have complete Saturday word so let's see okay Saturday is complete now if I will use f dot truncate over here it will remove everything and that thing will the data will also be deleted from the saved file truncate and I should use this truncate after f tell here line 22 we have a wrong indentation let me correct it uh, yes again one thing that I forgot truncate is used when you use uh, when you uh, use the file for reading and writing both operations not just for it's not uh, uh, allowed for the read operation so I have uh, uh, used R plus because I'm reading as well as writing and then I have uh, deleted everything that is there after Saturday and therefore you can see the read lines is going giving us nothing now let's see what has happened to our file you can see that we have <coughs> deleted everything after Saturday only this much is left within the file so this truncate file uh, what does it do Haitham uh, uh, can you tell me what has it done it has deleted all the data after a certain point in the file. Yes, exactly. So this is uh, w uh, w uh, what uh, how we use it. And uh, another thing that we must remember is that it's not uh, right. Uh, uh, it's it cannot be used when we are we have opened the file for reading purpose. It can be used when we are we have opened the file for writing purpose or reading plus, which means that reading as well as writing purpose. So then it, uh, it did not give us any error. So now let's move on. 
Now what it is, uh, what's, uh, what are we doing over here? Name is equal to input, address, data.txt, write name, age, close the file, then open it again for reading purpose and read it. Now try this out quickly. Uh, in this file you will make a, sh a small database, data of uh, user. Uh, you will ask uh, his or her name, age, some dummy address and then you will save it as a data.txt file and after that uh, you will open it and read it and display it. Quickly s take a screenshot, share it on WhatsApp and try it out. And uh, this time um, item you can share your screen wait a second take a screenshot and when you have taken the screenshot uh, let me know so that I can uh, stop presenting and then you you can share your screen and show us what you are doing I uh, took the screenshot okay T have you taken the screenshot yes okay I can stop presenting now yes okay Zoom a little bit. Uh, you can give a space here. After the column, you can give a space so that uh, when the user types, there's a space there as well. Okay, that's good. Now you can ask anything else, some dummy address or whatever. Now you have to create a file object. You can have any other name as well, not just F, F or anything. You can have For writing purpose? Okay. Then you uh, will use f.write, write method. You don't need to give uh, extra space between the function uh, method and the. Uh, uh, name then this plus is used to add the next string to it you have to add that plus in you have to write that plus there as well so whenever uh, 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 the, this is backslash you have placed the forward slashes and then they are wrong correct them the backslash comes and then in n that is backslash n for the next line the backslash comes and then after that n n is after the slash and the, you don't need to give uh, any extra space between the plus and the uh, quotation you have placed some extra spaces they are they, sh they are not needed it might give error 
okay you have given the address okay name then next line age and then address after that you will close the file and then you will open it again in order to read it reading for reading purpose if you put r plus then you can read as well again I read as well here anyways that's okay uh, the r is fine r r is fine we are not writing to file again so in the next line print f dot read uh, note one thing you don't need to uh, give extra spaces between the name of the function and the brackets and then close this F so is it working right name H you don't need to give your exact uh, correct uh, name or age or anything like that you just you know give dummy data because this file is being recorded okay so your program is working it, it the data has been saved in the file you can go to the folder uh, and open the text file and see what's in there yes it's okay that's fine it's good good you can stop sharing now so now you can make your file you can make your database as well so uh, our class uh, is running short of time let me quickly go through the encryption program which you guys have to work up on in the, as your project as well let me quickly uh, show you the program there are a few pro um, functions in it which uh, we have not covered in the class and I will recommend that you must uh, search a bit about them on the internet and see what they are doing like enumerate or order CHR and so on so what's happening here is that mm, first of all you can see that we have defined a function ZOR encrypt which uh, in which there are two arguments key text and the key key is the password and text is the text which is to be encrypted then we initialize this encrypt text as mm, empty and then uh, key length is the length of the key and then after that i is uh, uh, in this for loop i is the indexing variable and moves through the this enumerate text enumerate text basically creates an in iterable uh, object uh, which uh, this is what you guys have to see about and it's a few points are also given at the end of this current uh, lecture slides which i will share with you through whatsapp and what's happening over here is that it's simply uh, exclusive or this is the exclusive or it exclusive or the uh, key character with the text file this is called this is also called a sort of uh, basic type of encryption uh, the idea is that when we you exclusive or you have you guys uh, heard about uh, or L and logical and an exclusive or especially I'm asking Haitham have you heard about it and the or yes. is that here? exclusive no. or exclusive or no. No, you you have not uh, 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 search Google a bit about uh, ex uh, logical and or exclusive or. So th this thing, this <coughs> exponent symbol that you see here is performing the exclusive or. Exclusive or is used to encrypt or uh, you know uh, mm, uh, uh, encryption is used to hide the information. So that when you have the right password, then only you can see the information. So that thing is happening in this line number thirteen. So the text when you once in exclusive or with with the key it becomes uh, you know becomes garbage and the information is hidden if anyone opens that file he can't read what's there when you uh, again encrypt it with the same program with the same code if you encrypt it again it be becomes uh, the plain text that is it becomes readable again if you are using the correct key and use in uh, exclusive or twice 
and then you will get the original file back so in this way this is a basic type of encryption of course it's not very strong and it can be broken very easily through brute force attack or other different attacks there are different types of ways which in which file can be broken so uh, but uh, as far as the python and learning uh, and your level is concerned it's a very good mm, program the first step in uh, making such uh, uh, in encryption decryption files like that so mm, uh, the idea is that in this function we are exclusively exclusive or performing exclusive or of our password with the text file and after that that thing is saved uh, in uh, in the file now let's run it uh, enter the name of the text file we have to specify the name of the text file we can specify gf what was the name of that file gfg dot text file so this this is what i want to encrypt g gf g dot text file this file is what i want to encrypt and i am giving it a 8 bit key y a s i r 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 8 8 8 now there are 8 bytes key i've entered it and enter the name of the output file i'll write it as gfg2 dot txt this will be the um, uh, password protected file <coughs> Are you following you, you're, not, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, sorry. Let me. You must, you should have told me earlier. Anyways. Now. Okay, now you can see this. Uh, take a screenshot of this. Take a screenshot sh uh, of this and wha WhatsApp it. Now. Uh, what I've done over here is, if you look over here, you can see that this is GFG is the text file. And this was my key or password. And this is the output file and it says that file gfg.txt has been encrypted and saved as gfg2 now let's see what is there in this file you can see this encrypted file it contains garbage we can't read it on the other hand the original file is gfg if you specify the same name it will overwrite it and, uh, and now let me decrypt it again i will run the same program again and i will specify the name of the file i want to decrypt the file read it again so i will specify gfg.2.txt so it will be encrypted again actually it will get decrypt when we encrypt in this way the way i am encrypting if we encrypt it twice with the same key it becomes decrypted the key was password was yasir 888 and then i specify the name of the file gfg3.txt can you guys see it yeah okay now this is our three number three file let's see what's in there the original thing is back so it has uh, there's only this thing is has uh, you know it has changed something has gone wrong with it it was it's this it's has changed t t is lost during the process i don't know why but we have got the most of the information back so this is our decrypted file we encrypted the file and with a with certain key and then encrypted it again with the same key it got decrypted so this is what's happening in this program if you look at it again here we have specified the key and then it, uh, it's encryption encrypting the file and this is the exclusive or operation that is being performed here uh, it, it what it does it picks one character from the file and one character of the key and then Ex performs the exclusive or operation and after that it uh, saves that in the uh, text file that is the output file and here it is asking the user to tell us the key and the name of the file input file and the output file and uh, I expect you guys to go through this uh, file one at a time and spend some time with this file and try to modify it in such a way that it becomes your own program yeah uh, basically the project that i've given you is that in that project first of all you will take a text file from the user uh, then you will ask the user about the key and then you will encrypt that file using this the technique that i've used here uh, ex that is exclusive or and then override the existing file and after that when you want to read it again you will op ask the user to name tell the name of the file you will open it and then decrypt it with the key that user will tell you and then you will get the original file back so this is this type of program is what i want from you and 
try to spend a little time with this program that I'm going to share I'm sharing with you and the uh, last portion of the lecture slides and then submit the project accordingly okay try it it's uh, going to be a hard project but <coughs> it's, it's worth it uh, uh, Ahmed you know about the exclusive <coughs> or operation have you studied that at in high school science or in your college the logical and or operation uh, in your Python C coding, you must, uh, you, you, you should, uh, you guys both should search it on Google and uh, through YouTube and see what, what is, what are the logical and or operation, exclusive or operation. Using that exclusive or operation, try to make a, such an encryptor and uh, complete this project. It's going to be, you know, it's an important project for you. So please uh, do it properly and share it with me. You have uh, three, four more days and but do it properly so we are done with our today's class are there any questions okay so let's end today uh, okay so let's end today's session thank you very much Bye,